my name is Martin of Shannon. I'm here to talk about resurrecting craft. Uh, first of all, how many of you actually tried using craft? Okay. To bet, how many of you found it completely unusable <laughs> and gave up after a few moments? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first, a short introduction for those who didn't try. Uh, craft is a package which has a, a tool which finds things that should be on your system but aren't, or which are on your system but you, that they shouldn't be. And just an example of how it goes, you invoke it by, as root because it needs to scan the file system. And after a short or longer while, depending on your system size, it's out a report saying which things it didn't or did like. Oh, oh no, only the things that it didn't like. If it if all is fine, then the report is empty. Now, how it does it? Um, Craft does its job in a few stages. First of all, it needs to find what files are on the system. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to make it clear, when I mean files, I also mean all kinds of stuff like directories, sockets, and, and so on. Craft doesn't really care. So it invokes find on all file systems it can find in turn, uh, ignoring things you tell it not to scan and you know, ignoring special file systems like Proc or NFS and many others. And uh, it just dumps a list of all the files on these file systems to a set of uh, lists uh, which tell what files exist. Um, then it needs to find out what should be in the system and that part is taken care of out by so-called explain scripts which could theoretically be provided by individual packages but so far I don't provided by craft package or created by local process admin and these scripts uh, produce currently oh another thing I'm talking about the craft which is currently an experimental with this one with point eight D. It's not been applied to the version that works. Well the previous also works but works a bit differently. So this will hopefully be, will be how it will work. And uh, each subscript uh, is invoked and produces three lists of files on different file descriptors. Uh, first of all, list of files which may exist, that is, it's okay if a file called like that exists on the system. Then, uh, files which must exist, that is, it's an error if a such file doesn't exist on the system, and which must, must not exist. Uh, examples uh, of the files which may exist are things like logs or spool files, which probably exist on your system, but it's not an error if, if they're missing, if you delete it, or if they're not yet created. Uh, files which must exist are usually files which are installed by the package, or converted files, or some other things as well. And the files which must not exist are somewhat special. Uh, mostly for use by a package called the Pallet Purge, which purges some files. It's ge in general, it's not allowed for a file for a package to delete files from other packages, but it's one of those examples of exceptions. So, in, in that case, uh, um, one explanation can say that a file must not exist, while another explanation says the same file must exist. Yes, I'll talk about it later. Um, then, Craft needs to compare these two sources of information. What is there and what? should be there and it uh, produces another three sets of files uh, lists of files which are unexplained or missing which should be there but aren't or forbidden which must not be there but are um, and these are created in a single run by a clever uh, modified merge algorithm which does the job quite efficiently uh, and then these files are merged, formatted, indented, 
um, output as a report, which you can either craft and send by email or just output to standard input so you can see it in a pager. Or you can use a midnight commander VFS plugin which allows you to see it in a tree like way, which is especially useful if the report is something like 20,000 files <laughs> <laughs> different directories, which does happen on real systems. Because Craft isn't perfect yet. Now uh, that was the core functionality of Craft. Uh, there's some something more. First of all, uh, there's an uh, additional possibility to do some I call it integrity checking, but it's not really integrity. It's just a way to take advantage of the, the fact that Find already scans all file systems and output some list of some files to uh, another stream and, and then check them in some way. I will talk about it later. And also there's another, let's say, called layer uh, called filtering, which also makes graph much, much more flexible in some cases that we also talk about it. Uh, let's say about checking first. Mm, maybe it will be easier to to tell how it works now. Basically, there's only one such string currently, and it's taking care of synonyms. So, find as it goes on all the file systems, just outputs all the file, all all symlinks to uh, a file. Then a special checker script is run on this file, which just checks if the file, if the symlink is broken or not, and if and the list of broken settings and then is then appended to the report. You could also imagine another reasons to, to do such checking for things like directories or I don't know. Maybe it's a it's a nonsense, but I heard that how uses uh, additional metadata in, in some files to implement translators, so maybe checking as well. Anyway, it's it's now quite uh, quite well abstracted and it's easy to add another checking checks to to this to this scheme, unlike it was before. Uh, about filtering, filtering is performed by a simple script which just reads uh, all its inputs from previous previous stages and outputs everything it doesn't filter to standard output. It's a single single program which reads different uh, filter files depending on which part of filtering it's supposed to do. All the filters are pretty simple as you can see. They are using uh, an additional uh, syntax to uh, get rid of all Subdirectory trees, which is similar to what Apache AND uses, if you know it. Um, why are we using it? Uh, theoretically, it could be possible to just do all the job using uh, explain scripts. But as in real life, there are some problematic cases like some files moving or renaming files, uh, deleting files from other packages, or conflicting uh, explain scripts, or, or other things that I don't even want to think about. And having such an additional layer makes it easy to just get rid of some, some reports, or some part of reports for a system who doesn't want to care about the fact that some package is buggy or there's a conflict or something. It will also let use let the package use uh, the extra files. Let craft use the package extra files database when if it is finally implemented. Uh, and in general, uh, filtering files is much faster than using explain script because explain explain scripts usually have to first they are a different an additional process which needs to be created uh, and second they usually what they usually do is 
just run another find command to just select some subtree and then output that to standard output. So craft and then uh, remove uh, that files from the report. Um, but filters make it easier and faster. Um, now a bit about history. Uh, that was written a long, long time ago by Anthony. <laughs> and even as it was being being developed, uh, there was a uh, Anthony saw that there is need that there is a need to register some files which aren't registered anyway currently. Most prominent example is if you look for FEC password in using the package search, it doesn't find it. And it's, uh, it's not perfect, especially for new users, but I think having an additional database of all the files which are installed by IDBM would be good. So he proposed a, uh, an extra files uh, change to, to the policy. Unfortunately, the proposal was abandoned and the package was not changed to, to have this functionality. And so, after slowly bit plotting over the next few years with just a couple of maintainer uploads, uh, a curious maintainer, maintainer non maintainer upload some, some time ago. Uh, then, at DevConf in Finland, I think he, uh, I asked. Maybe if it was okay for me to just try and take care of craft for, for a little while and see if anything can come out of it. So I imported uh, the source to the subversion repository, which hopefully makes it easier for other people to submit changes to the numerous filter and, and explain files. Uh, I fixed many bugs, just just a couple are left. And I did some refactoring of some code, with some of which was just quite ugly. Some of it was uh, was impossible to to fix some bugs without changing it. So it's now mostly cleaned up and, and works. And works can be summed up as does not report false positives on a base install. That is, if you run the bootstrap and run craft inside of it, it work. It, it doesn't doesn't say anything, but as soon as you start using the system, it will probably, there will probably appear some files like log files or save files, which it doesn't know about yet, so there's a still, there's still a long way uh, for craft to, to go. Um, but why, uh, why the additional <coughs> words in, in the title, the subtitle of this talk. Uh, I found out that the ability to have another database of files which are installed by a certain package is a good way to test the package itself. I found a, a couple of cases where the posting script was buggy and didn't do what it was supposed to do with uh, alternatives or the versions. And somehow the system worked, but the files were not quite as, as they should be. Craft detected such, um, such things. Uh, it also detects things like random files appearing on your system because of a package bug or because of another administrator who uh, just didn't clean up, clean up after themselves. And that's another. Uh, that's another reason we should. I think we should have craft. Uh, just to conclude, uh, links to three uh, threads on the game policy and the game uh, that I could find from the from past. There's a wish list part for on midnight commander, which contains the uh, virtual file system. Plugin, <laughs> which is useful for live reports, and also to craft public images. And that's about it.
Any questions? I have a question which is slightly unrelated, but what is the status of these extra files? Does, does anybody know? Well, the status is there was a proposal right. a long time ago, and that's it. There, there has been a more recent one on the WMD pack, package, I think. Mm. Um, but you have to be able to look at the list to see if I can find it. Is there any way to make this file operation run any faster? It takes ages in the first run, does it? Well, every run, every run actually. Um, Never tried it twice. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. I, I, I recognize that this, this is just uh, uh, the beginning. Make it, run, make it work pro properly first before optimizing it. Right? So it's interesting to me because um, more than a decade ago, when I was managing a group of people who maintained several thousand Unix machines, including mostly HPUX systems, but also some Solaris and other things, um, we had a system that we put in place as a result of demands by our internal auditors that had a data collection engine that was very similar to this in the sense that it was running big fines over the file system and generating huge lists of files and then parsing those down to eliminate things that were understood to be part of software packages delivered with the original OS. And then what would happen is we would take the resulting long list of files along with their permissions and owners and all that other useful goo. <coughs> and that was all being delivered to a central database from which we had one of the very early sort of web interfaces to anything running. And where it got really interesting was when you could see patterns of the same behavior happening across multiple machines or where you could discern uh, a new rule that it would be useful to have in processing the data. And I wonder if you've thought at all about how to sort of take this beyond the, here's a, a sort of human readable text formatted report. I wonder if the future of this class analysis tool isn't somehow to figure out how to hook it into one or more of the interesting sysadmin frameworks you know, come up with some reasonable database schema for what an exception or what a piece of data which might have exception rules and filtering rules applied to it should look like. And I think that kind of goes, in my mind, to the question of what people think the point of a tool like this is and why the other folks in the room would be interested in having it. Is it to help just general systems administration? Is it pure curiosity? Is it because you'd like to see if your packages are broken and doing strange things to the system? Is it because you run a lot of machines that are subjected to auditing requirements and you want another tool for that tool set? I'm curious what other, if any of this makes any sense to anybody else. Yeah, that was really my second question. What is, is this more like for developers to sort of clean up the packages or clean up other people's packages or is it more for system administration to clean up the system after it's run for a while or both? Yes, I mean, it's not just about cleaning up the system, it's more about finding what are the things on the system. To well, which then, then it really models. ties into a intune detection system, which also does things like that, right? They also scan files and check if they've been but changed. The problem with intune detection systems is that they're not aware of the dpackage database, I think. Well, so exactly, this has the potential right. to return a, a shorter report that's easier to read than but it's sort of some of the other ones. Dance is around in the middle of all these things, right? And it's, it's well, then I think you also have to ask the question, question of why does something show up in a crop report? Um, I don't remember what it was called, but someone did a backup system for Debian machines at one point that was interesting because it would only try to backup those files which weren't part of the package. Which would appear in crop, for example. 
Mm -hmm. Right. So in effect, it was the um, you know if 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 it's flagged as cruft and it's out in some weird system directory, it may be because there's a packaging error. If it's flagged as cruft but it's in a directory that contains the files that actually matter to you on that system, it may be a good indication that that's what's unique about that machine that needs to be backed up. A, additional configuration file, the result of running a spice job, or I don't know, whatever it is. And so this is where, to me, um, I'm really pleased to see that Cruft has had some attention, because AJ will tell you, it's something he and I have talked about at various times way back when, and this is the class of tool that I think is neat, because it's taking advantage of things that are sort of uniquely interesting on Debian systems, but I immediately start trying to figure out, okay, and if we get all the bugs fixed and everything, and it's sort of working, what then would you want to do with it, and how might that drive you to make decisions about what to do next? I don't have a lot of answers, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> well, my, one thing I thought of was, uh, currently it just does the simplest thing possible, which is uh, have lists of files with one file name, in one line, no metadata apart from it. So one way would be to change the protocol somehow to let the, the sub-processes uh, communicate something more than just the file name. For example, for these filter processes, not just to filter out, but to categorize these craft items, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Instead of just one rule or leave it or uh, drop it, a set of rules. Is it in a slash file directory? Is it a log file? Is it what? Mm -hmm. Well, that really, I think, comes back to the what are you really trying to accomplish? Because if you're doing your security auditing, what you might really care about is not mm -hmm. only that the file exists, but what's the owner group and permissions, um, maybe other Apple stuff if you've got. You know, other things going on in your system. Um, it could be that um, if you're trying to do intrusion detecting, but you don't only care about that, but you'd like to do the tripwire thing of knowing are any of the files that were delivered by packages on your system uh, differing in their crypto checksums from what they were when they were installed. And so this is where I, you know, for those of us like me who run a notebook that hasn't it's got a Debian image that was first installed um, many years ago. It can be very instructive to run a tool like this just on your own system and get some sense of how much true cruft has accumulated. But if you do that once every five years or something, then, you know, cool. Now what else would you do with it? <laughs> it's the sort of thing if you're about to move to a larger hard disk in a few minutes with cruft would save you transferring that handful of log files that you didn't even know were there that represent you know, 6 gig of data or something, then it might be worth the effort. Well, to tell the truth, uh, you know, very uh, interesting things, but the level of false positives to real uh, positive work done by Kraft was so uh, so saying I, that yeah. I didn't think of any more advanced things until I got it to... Um, this process bridge when we get to it. So what would you like to have happen next? Would you like us to all go try the current version and see what we think? Uh, um, well, I mean, it's neat to see that you've been working on this. That's great, but I, I'm, I'm, what, would you like, what would you like from us and what would you like to do next? Uh, I think... The best way would be to uh, have it work properly on, a, on something more than a phase install, say uh, a small standard system which people really use and it's not just created from the bootstrap and you can keep it pristine. And possibly there, there would be other things that would need more refactoring of the, of the design. And I think at some point we could get to a point where uh, the design is stable enough to think about other things like adding metadata uh, support or categorizing or anything else. So can you talk a little bit about what these false positives normally are? 
if you have a full system? Well, um, anything that isn't directly installed by the package, but yeah. created in a maintainer script or created by a daemon or another process. I'm thinking, thinking, thinking maybe, oh sorry. Have you got an example of one of the longer reports rather than just the little timeline you had at the start? So I'm thinking maybe the problem isn't really that Croft you know, needs more work, but that the rest of the system needs to be more regularized. Mm -hmm. For example, we have this extra files database and our things perhaps. This is a bug fix already. <laughs> this one. So while it's going, one of the things that I was originally planning before I just completely dropped it because extra files wasn't going anywhere, was still um, reworking the code so that rather than just running find, it would do the directory traversal itself and only to send a directory if some of the explanations or something indicated that some of the files, but perhaps not all of them, mm -hmm. underneath that directory would actually be relevant, which would let you say um, if everything under slash home is unexplained without actually having to find everything under slash home. Right. which is probably more important for NFS sort of stuff too. Um, and I'm just running Croft now for the last five minutes or something. <laughs> I'm not getting a result yet, so... Yeah, it would definitely be, be needed, but I just wanted to postpone any performance improvements yeah. after I got it to run. Yeah, well, yeah, I thought the same, and it's still in the first moment as far as I'm concerned. Well, for example, one thing that could be a, a, like an answer to, to your question on, on speed is, of course, uh, maybe not the main mode, the main operation mode, but uh, you could, uh, besides taking the data from the real life uh, installs, take also a, be able to use a locate DB because you have every file in your system registered there. So, I mean, just like uh, crossing information between sources that are already available in the system instead of fetching it every time you run it. Uh, that's a good, that's a good idea. <coughs> Maybe similar integration with intrusion detection systems. Of course, and, 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 and that would not uh, work for intrusion detection because an intruder, maybe the first thing uh, would be to modify the locate DB or whatever, uh, but, but it works for package maintainers or for users just looking for Croft or for people like Vidal who have a long living system. I didn't mean to integrate LocateDB with intrusion detection, to integrate Croft with mm -hmm. intrusion detection to make use of their databases which might be more data rich than LocateDB. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I found a little challenging the last time I played with it, which was frankly before you started working on it, was that it is expensive to do a complete run. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I missed a little bit from this old system that people working for me had invented that unfortunately I couldn't just go fetch again because I don't work there anymore, um, was this notion that the process of collecting the data about the system and the further processing of that data were actually quite separated. And so well, it, it, it meant that you didn't have to rerun the big find if you wanted to change exclusions or something like that. If you wanted to say, okay, um, forget slash home because you know I didn't I wasn't thinking when I first ran it and I included all that data. Is that stuff easy to do now? Or Actually, it does it already? Okay. Kind of. You see that there are three Right. Variables okay. with files, reports, yeah. and, uh, and this cleanup, I think. Yeah. Okay, so you could so play around without having to. Really so if you, you you can you can tell it not to run this bit, which uh, as far as I can tell runs both the fine. And explain and call this to explain scripts. So you could easily split that into two, so you could have it scan the file system once and then rerun explain scripts as you change them or something. Like that. Okay. And it's already been there from, from the beginning. Okay. Just a matter of. 
Um, uh, I see some people are talking about EBS because uh, security, uh, everyone has security in mind. But uh, I have another uh, point on what, what I want to speak about because uh, I tend to work like that. Uh, for example, I uh, set up a complete system, okay? Um, and uh, I uh, and edit a lot of configuration files and I create configuration files. Uh, and many other files uh, in different uh, locations uh, on my uh, disk. Uh, once I have done this, I will take all this data and I want to know what is important and what I have added to the system to make it run. And it's very important to me because I, uh, I pick this, uh, this data and I put it in, uh, in Puppet or CF Engine, uh, which uh, help me to replicate my system over uh, the network. Uh, for now, I'm using uh, Debsum uh, just to uh, list the configuration file I have modified. It's efficient because I, uh, I get a list of uh, something like uh, I know that I've modified at this network, uh, I know I extra, extra, and um, I just uh, copy this file into my, uh, into my subversion uh, Puppet repository uh, and I begin to uh, and edit it to uh, make it integrate with Puppet. And I think it's, it could be very, uh, it's, uh, well, it's hard to do uh, if you, uh, if you uh, stand uh, in Puppet, change the, the file and uh, upload it to the system because it's long, it's complicated. If you uh, edit directly the configuration file, try the, it's, try the, the service, it's faster. Uh, but at the end, you must remember all the change you have done. So, do you think that, um, yeah. just, uh, just to give you an example, uh, if, well, well, it's possible, I don't know if uh, it's uh, what you have in mind, but um, uh, when I have done something in Puppet, just to uh, establish that I have changed this using Puppet, I upload an explain file, saying this file has been uh, uploaded with Puppet, it's normal that it has been modified or it's here because I just put it here uh, and uh, I can uh, see all the change uh, except, except the change I have done uh, through Puppet uh, to my uh, configuration file and the other data files that I have uploaded to the system. Do you think it would be useful uh, to use Craft to uh, List this change? Currently, Craft only cares about additions and removals. It doesn't know about modifications at all. Yes, that's the reason why I use Debsums. <laughs> and I think that you cannot uh, cop uh, what Debsums uh, do for a configuration file. But uh, as a problem, so just to, to give you an example, uh, UTC uh, canal image that comes mm -hmm. uh, should not exist. So it is not listed in the in the mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, But I have added I, I have added to the system because I need it. So uh, it's a uh, it's a complementary uh, regarding uh, the use of Debsum. Just, just to know if uh, sysadmin ca can use your system to replicate configuration among uh, uh, many. Uh, so it's some combination of the Debsum's yes. analysis to know which files Cruft isn't triggering have been changed combined with what Cruft finds for the files that are not expected or missing. Yes. Do you think we can use, I can use Cruft because I think I'm the only one who uses this uh, for this or not? Um, well, it will tell you about the files you've added or removed. Yes. And part of the JavaScript would be copy all the files to your puppet, uh, all the subversion of the screen. But it doesn't know at all about files that change and we want the yeah. modifications to copy. But if we add some metadata uh, or cryptographic checksums support to craft, I think it could, it could be used for this. Okay. Fine. Thanks. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't no, it takes that long. <laughs> <laughs> it could be because I used it only on a on a truth. Mm. Really? Just to show you. And I have more than one such truth on the system, so. <laughs>
So we're all watching with great curiosity to see whether you wait for it to finish or not. <laughs> Mine finished. No. Oh, oh, what was it, 10 minutes? Um, I don't know how long, how long it was. Maybe I have some old. Hmm. It's still running though. Yeah, I, have, I have an idea for this that uh, I thought of not necessarily for this application, although this would help a lot. Um, wouldn't it be cool if we had a yeah, file yeah. system that cached MD5 sums in yeah, it somewhere? Except for better if there were challenges. Well, that's fine too, but it could do both. Um, uh, but then you could use it. But then you could use it for uh, rsync and deb sums and cruft and a whole bunch of other things. And you yeah. could probably use ext3 because it has the ability to store. We could just have lots more RAM. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, you could just you, can, you, you could do in like instead of a journal, you could have it, you know, cache that stuff in some other file somewhere that'd be really fast. Yeah. You could use a kernel I notify mechanism to have a, a daemon that would listen to. Yeah, so when the file changes, so then it would do the right thing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. The problem with that is if you've got a, five, uh, got a two gigabyte file and you change one byte in it, that's <laughs> recomputed, yeah. The entire file, one byte anyway, yeah. No, if you do it incremental. That's what we'll do with those. Extra yeah, if you were using a D4 or something. That's what we do with the extra RAM and those extra <laughs> cores that are sitting out there, right? It's got to be pretty fast disk to get off the disk too. That's fine. We well, can for RC, you want to actually be able to compute little, you know, checksums per yeah, per, per chunk. Yeah, you can Well, if you go that way, you can just might as well just hook it into IDO if I check the file as it was created. If it yeah. should even be created, you know, but then it's kind of crazy. New file, it system, is, but yeah. new file system definition to store this along with the other file metadata. There's probably other cool stuff you can do like that too. Well, anyway, here's an example of lots and lots of false positive. <laughs> like, so why would those be there? not false. So how can those be there? Are they asking? Are they not? Registry. They're all. Uh, so those would be hard links to a single binary, probably. They're uh, created on post Yes. Uh, uh, they're all effects of nasty things that the world is doing there. Like they didn't get a bot and script. So pro pro the problem is if a package is doing nasty things like those hard links, uh, where do you store the information about this not being craft in the package or in the core database? Well, the extra files. Well, or in, in extra files, the other possibility is for mm -hmm. package to be delivering <coughs> file for items uh, craft the way we do with so many other things. Oh, yeah, I finished things. running. So, so yeah, yeah, that looks a lot like craft handlers. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, if it's not installed by the package, and it's not something like uh, an alternative. Stuff, that's an interesting well, why are the dot .pys getting hit? No, because that's oh. support. Yeah, I thought that's not user lead right now. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it seems to me that pretty much everything below our lip should be excluded. But I mean, Unless you want to keep like a huge database of everything. It yeah. depends yeah. what the project running craft is. is so, in theory, you just have a filter saying that anything under valid Python support is controlled by Python support, so it's all fine. But if you had something under valid Python um, SUP or RT, then that would be a mistake because it's a typo. So, obviously, something got put there accidentally and it's not controlled by Python support, so you might want to know about it. Also, Python support doesn't do its job properly, and there's some bug which you can never find it because of some bug. And you never know about. Have you have you looked at the way the uh, filters work in log check, which are just sort of, uh, some, uh, supposedly uh, um, intrusion detection, but also just useful for general admin? Well, what do you mean? Um, I don't log check. <coughs> yeah, uh, but it uh, it has just all this um, rather complicated system for uh, uh, either marking that something it, that uh, an oddity is the responsibility of some. Um, Let's get to go package it does now. The problem is with logic is that it uses regular expressions which mm. are quite expensive. And all these shadows as opposed to globs. <laughs> as opposed to globs for the Well maybe actually uh, 
my gloves are certainly pointing yeah. to <laughs> Good regular expression engine is better than the current implementation of the problem. Well, it would have been implemented really well if glibc had actually worked as documented at the time. <laughs> it may well work as documented now. Well, there's definitely lots of room for improvement. And if you have any ideas or want to help. So I have a machine that was installed in 1997 and it's been really unstable ever since then and I've, you know, and, and I've just been totally sloppy about everything that I've installed on there. Is it useful to you to do a corrupt run and get all this garbage back and then send it to you and, and that will help you just pick up the packages? Um, Actually, fix it? but not yet. Okay. It might be interesting to make a place where you can send corrupt reports like popcorn and then just so people are willing to give lists of files that are on the disk. Do you think that there would be an issue with your privacy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. automatically. I mean, just for something that... Have a command that, that I want it. to make all my files. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the good thing about popcorn is that it, it runs quickly. Running a uh, craft uh, in the background, well, it, it kind of slows you down a bit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it uses vivid memory, vivid CPU, and it is fine. Yeah, but when I'm not using that stuff, it just wasted anyways. Flushes out the cache, that's the tucky part. Well, I'd like to, at the moment, the priority is to work on more, more packages. So, do you, do you want to start collecting more uh, rules about what sort of stuff is? is is okay next, or do you want to work on getting speed better, or like what's yeah, the yeah. what's the next goal? Good question. I, I, I think it, it, it like the, the ultimate goal is to have more patterns and traits with but if uh, the way the, the current cut performance is stopping people from trying to um, submitting patches and so on, maybe. Improving performance is a more priority. I think it should be a bit of both because if you if it gives you lots of fails, false positives in, on your own system, you probably don't need a lot of input from other people yet. You need to sort it on your system first, and then you can work on making it more suitable for more people to run. So, what do you tell? Package maintainers now who provide the uh, who deliver things to explain the way files that they create. I'm just saying the documentation doesn't say you know they should explain away things that are automatically created or like log files or. I'd say for now the, the best way is just send an explain script or a filter file to me or file it in PDF included included in crap. Because I haven't really thought about the way that overrides should work. Because, say, a package has an explain script, and then the maintainer doesn't really care about it, and the explain script gets outdated after some time. So then I uh, then I ship another uh, improved version of Craft, uh, which overrides it. But then again, the maintainer does more changes, and then he has got the better version at some point, so we need to think of a way to let it work smoothly. One thing I, I thought of was to have a one-line comment in the explain, explain script or, uh, or the filter file which would say the last, least recently changed uh, version of the package. The last... Um, last modi yeah. So I think for most packages, you don't need to worry about an explain script, but just a filter file, which is just a list of files that you manu manually delete on remove or purge with the slash star, slash double star, blobby, if you like. And I, I think having a file like that for each of your packages would 
pretty much get rid of the false positives. I guess my point is just the, the mentality of what are they assuming that Corrupt is trying to accomplish of the different classes that we talked about. There's finding junk on your system and there's these things are different, please back them up. Because if you if you tell them, you know, depending on what you tell the maintainer, logs may or may not be interesting. You know, because maybe you want to back up logs. Um, but if you're just trying to explain that away as like, no, this isn't garbage, it's mm -hmm. it should be here, then you would have that in the filter. And, you know, so you may even want to define multiple classes of like things that are, I don't know, you'd have to come up with use models so for Croft, but. The, for something like that, you probably want to, see, want to have Croft generate different reports. So you could have Croft generate a report that these are the files I've got no idea about, which is what it does at the moment. Like ones that should be here and should or ones that should be here and should. But that's more of a, um, give me a list of files that aren't already taken care of, like dpackage, say. And then you're just excluding the dpackage files rather than excluding all the files that are taken care of by something. That's a very good idea. Splitting the two things where it's, it's like known about, but outside of the package and unknown as the two categories. And then somebody who is choosing to use Cruft to, to back up their system would want to back up the things that are known about, but outside of the package. And would, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's very easy. It's just a matter of getting the, the value D package info list. So we could then reinstall all the packages that you have installed previously and apply and, and install all comp files and all the files that put in my craft and have to so just like in theory, I've been sitting here thinking about this though, and the thing that's happened in the interim of the last few years that makes me wonder how many people would really actually do that very much is the emergence of tools that do um, delta-based incrementals like Dervish, where it's in effect, you know, r syncing your tree over to a server and the server's only storing all the files that differ from the last time you did it which leaves you in a situation where you have a no-brainer way to put a system back to the state it was in at any point within the window you've configured it to keep history for. And I wonder if that sort of truly generic approach for doing system restoration or replication isn't almost <coughs> more interesting than something like this where I just keep thinking, oh, well, there's two more special cases you'd have to think about. It makes me wonder if this isn't a more interesting idea in the context of either um, system cleanup or um, possibly intrusion detection system kinds of interfaces, maybe, at least in my mind, maybe less interesting as a, as a way to drive a, a backup or system restoration process. Don't know. Different people put different values in different things. But putting this much energy into figuring out how to handle the stuff that's roughly associated with the packaging system when interesting servers and interesting end user machines tend to have the vast majority of their content be the other data that's on the disks. I don't know. I just wonder how exciting that is. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, I mean, I, I've certainly thought about it before a bunch of times myself, and it's another one of those sort of routinely appealing ideas, but I'm just not sure it really goes anywhere. Like as we're on the tangent, um, where I work for Windows PCs, they use a, a proprietary tool called Connected Backup, um, and it backs up a whole bunch of PCs, but it looks at MD5 sums of files. Um, to figure out what's different. And so if it's backing up 100 PCs and they're all running the same version of Windows, it only has to back up one copy of most of those Windows files. Likewise, if 20 of those machines are running a particular application that it's stalled, it only has to back up that application once. And I thought that's kind of a, a neat idea and something I would like to see for Linux where you could well, kind of compare. Like so so I don't, I, I, we should ask Keith, because he actually uses it. I think that may be something Dervish does. Okay. Because he was trying to convince me that I ought to be backing up all the way from 
liquids on my eyes, using the urge to a disc and then letting that be back to the tape and stuff back and everything directly. To tape. But it just uses R sync, but it's also maybe comparing the different machines. Well, it does R syncs to a tree and then on the server it's compressing to its own machine with deltas. And it actually does store deltas. So you can actually go back. Not just per machine, but across machines. It seems obvious and logical that that would be there, whether the code actually does it or not. Keith would know because he runs it. I think the connected thing is even smart enough to do, if, it, if the MD5 some of the files the same, even and if it's, it's in a different path, right. yeah, it still does right. the right thing. And I don't know if our sync would do that. That was connected backups when the family when it first started. Yeah. A bunch of years ago. But in the end, we, we wouldn't have to worry about uh, that, that exact uh, issue you're mentioning because, uh, well, in Windows it's uh, regularly usual that a uh, low privileged user installs an application on his uh, accessible directory. Uh, in a Unix system it's not that common, although of course in large installations it may be. But it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really big deal anytime you get into production environments because then typically people are wanting to be very careful about how they let things change and migrate. It, it's, it's not, you know, for a bunch of individual developers or um, you know, mixed population machines, you're right, they're going to be less similar. But if you get into any kind of an office environment or um, certainly kind of near cluster kind of large production environments, uh, people really do want to control the process by which things got updated. Well, I mean, of course, I understand uh, that point. And that point I completely agree. Uh, for example, with the solution you mentioned at the beginning of the talk, that uh, there was a backup system that uh, took only the differences between a uh, uh, regular uh, install and what you had in there. Uh, it was a package. Yes. I don't remember what it was called. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're saying there's, it's less of a win on a, on a Linux-based system than it would I mean, be on a Windows-based system. It's quite uh, strange for a, for a Unix system that's not a huge uh, machine to have uh, binaries in different places, specifically uh, yeah, for okay. a Debian system. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Although data... Uh, uh, sorry? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Yes. Yes, that's right. So it's fine. And there's, there's data as well, so it's about unpacked kernel trees, for it's example. purely file data. You may have 20 different kernel trees that are mostly the same. You could really win a lot. Ideally, right? what it would do is um, only five some of the files. Who are we talking about? That's what this commercial product kind of did. Oh. It's been doing it for years. We should, that would be easy for us to do. That's a, that would be a really good idea. You just dump all of, use the MD5 sum, just like Git does, use the MD5 sum as a Actually, just stuffing the files into a Git repository. The <laughs> 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 well, alternatively, just MD5 summing the file, stuffing it into a directory that's keyed by the first two digits of the MD5 sum, and, it's, and then hard linking that back into the tree. Right? So you create a tree of hard links into MD5 sum named files, and then the files are all common <laughs> shared across multiple. Uh, just very cool. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty much, yeah, just using Git to store your entire file system. Well, you can store your file system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that would not be hard to hack up. Serving <laughs> you? Not today. <laughs> The person I work with wrote a, a similar tool that just goes through an entire tree and finds where files are identical and hard links them, you know, and that's like, can be evil, but sometimes that's not the behavior you want. I think he was doing it when he was building ISOs or something, that, yeah. where you knew you weren't going to change it anyway. Yeah. Well, the, the dervish notion of having, a, having multiple trees that hard link the same file across them for multiple generations is, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a huge feature for backups. I can't imagine doing it. What? Does it? Yeah. It, it, our sync makes it so easy. You just make a simply a hard link tree with copy What's and our sync onto it. So it's, it's creating a hard link tree and an R sync on, on top of it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's really, really simple. It burns a lot of directory entries, but who cares? Who cares? <laughs>
Yeah, it doesn't burn any. I, I haven't hands. gotten around to figuring out that that's what it was doing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was a point in history where I went and looked at a few of these and uh, I couldn't find anything that I thought was better than Dervish, but it's been a while since I looked. And I never got around to implementing any of them in my house, so my wife's machine still doesn't have that one. Backup, so like something you look at anything Actually, I've been very lucky the last couple of catastrophic system failures I've had. The backups have been good. I've not got a 24 slot out of chamber with 400 gig tapes and the basement does so. that. I just have to figure out how to get individual matter runs back under 15 hours. <laughs> So I think we're officially on a <laughs> tangent now. Are we done with the crust stuff? Yeah. Well, anyway, I, I know there's place for much discussion still, but uh, I think it has to be my role to, to say this buff is over. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.